those who watched yesterday, certainly in the third hour of the program, <laughs> uh, I, I, I uh, placed front and center, which was a decision uh, for many people uh, in, in my shoes um, yesterday as somebody who had Dalvin Cook in fantasy. And I understand the show deals with reality more than fantasy, and we will get to that in a second, but just to pay it all off, in case anyone was wondering, based on hearing our show, whether you're listening to us on Sirius XM 85 or uh, Rich Eisen Show Terrestrial Radio Outfit Odyssey or our podcast or watching us on Peacock, you know I was struggling. I asked for expert advice from three uh, fantasy uh, mavens across our NFL feelings. media landscape. I know it hurt your feelings. You <laughs> said, hey, never hurts to start your fantasy stud. Uh, yeah. Dalvin Cook. Waking up Thursday morning, all of us were like, well, he's not going to be uh, playing because he's got uh, a, uh, a torn labrum, a shoulder oh, injury, and then he's actually active. Uh, yes, I did, in fact, start Dalvin well, Cook, okay. which is why I'm here today, which is why I'm here today, because if I had not uh, started Dalvin Cook, I might, uh, I, 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 I might be in bed <laughs> we uh, a in a field <laughs> position right now with, the, talking with, bad with the shades drawn. Holy crap. I mean, Dalvin Cook Ooh. and the Vikings. I mean, Dalvin Cook waking up Thursday morning just like the rest of us, putting pant leg uh, on uh, one at a time. Uh, but uh, he's he's not like us, is he? He is not. Except like when he puts us. his on, he runs a four one forty. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Dalvin Cook with a twenty seven rush, two hundred five wow. yard outing with two scores. And the first quarter of the game, first half of the game, every single time he touched it, he was getting multiple first downs with one carry. Yep. He was running through holes that I could not believe existed. <laughs> and and Justin Jefferson was finding seams that were so wide open, I was wondering if the Steelers had actually made the flight to Minnesota. Seriously. I could not believe what the – Steelers defense looked like early on in that game. The, the fact that the, the yeah. Vikings didn't score a touchdown on their first drive, but instead had a missed field goal on their first drive, that was the outlier <laughs> on the evening, with the exception of the fact that this is the Minnesota Vikings, with all due respect. Because the Steelers, at one point, <laughs> shortly before halftime, had more penalty yards than total yards. Ben Roethlisberger had 66 yards passing in the first half. Najee Harris was erased. This was a 29-0 game. It was ugly. As the Vikings settled for two field goals to start the second half. This thing was over. I was wondering if Dalvin Cook would take the rest of the night off. The $10 <laughs> bill guy, Alexander Madison, would come out and start running the rest of the night, certainly since Cook's shoulders, both of them are hurt. And then the comeback started. Because like I said, it's the Minnesota Vikings. Missed field goal, missed extra point, first half, didn't matter until it started to matter. And that's, this last night's game was the Vikings season in a nutshell. Kirk Cousins looking great. Team looks great. Team looks like world beaters. As Mike Zimmer said after the game, first half, we looked like we could beat anybody. Second half looks like anybody could beat us. That's the Vikings 2021 season. They've got a quarterback who can light it up and then throw it to the other team. They've got a running back who can light it up when healthy and a wide receiver in Justin Jefferson, who is so damn special. Yeah. So damn special. With a name like that, he had to be rich. And they... And <laughs> <laughs> and and then and then they've got a guy in Harrison Smith who's so damn special too yeah. because the way that he knocked that ball out of Pat Fryermuth's hand Yo. in the end zone that was that, that was amazing that was unreal because on first blush at the end of the game Touched when Fryermuth couldn't collect a ball that Big Ben darted in through the one inch window he could with three Vikings around the tight end favorite tight end target of Ben Roethlisberger hit Fryermuth right in the hands. I thought it was because of the hit that he took. Nope. It was not because of the hit that he took. It's because Harrison Smith punched the football out coming from behind. What an incredible all pro play from yeah. the golden domer who wears purple. Now that was it. Now, of course, big Ben would have had to have gone for two and 
connected on that afterwards. They had the momentum, though. So, you know, what does it mean for the Vikings? I have no idea, man. <laughs> I have no idea because they can finish up the season strong at 6-7. and seven. They're just a half game out of the wild card. San Francisco, which has already beaten them, goes to Cincinnati this week. And the Washington football team, which is a half game in front of them, goes to Dallas. We could have a four-way tie at 6-7. and seven. Or if the Panthers beat the Falcons, whoever wins that game, they're 6-7. and seven. If the Saints beat the Jets, which we expect, we could have, holy crap, we could have seven, six, and seven teams going into week 15 with four games to go. Anybody can make it at six and seven. You're in two in the wild card, five sniffing it. And, and if the Seattle Seahawks win, you know, they could be five and eight. And two of those teams that I just mentioned are making the playoffs in the NFC. Why not the Vikings? Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.